Good afternoon and welcome to the Dobo Engineering Monthly Webinar Series. My name is Monty Yashigi. I'm the Director of Client Service Accounts and your host for today's webinar. I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to join us. Our webinar today is entitled, Testing Three Winding Transformers, and will be presented by Norbert Gilbert at Dobo Engineering. Before I introduce Norbert and turn over the presentation to him, I wanted to go over a few procedures to assure that today's webinar flows smoothly. First, all attendees' phones and microphones have been muted in order to eliminate any background noise which could interfere with the presentation. We do encourage you to ask questions, and we ask that you submit your questions using the question feature on your screen. We'll collect all questions and present these during a brief question and answer period after Norbert has completed his presentation. We'll read and answer each question verbally, one at a time. If you'd like to get credit for continuing education units or earn one professional development hour, please answer the question related to our webinar today in the feedback form, which will be sent to you at the end of the webinar. A certificate for credit will be sent to those who complete the question. Finally, I'd like to mention that our session today will be recorded and the links sent to all registered attendees if you wish to view the webinar again. As an added benefit to our Dobo clients, our recording today, along with past recorded webinars, can be viewed on demand by logging into the Dobo portal and clicking on the link for Dobo webinars. A reminder that Dobo clients are those companies who are members of our annual Dobo service program with a valid Dobo service agreement. Now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter. Norbert Gilbert is a senior principal engineer for Dobo Engineering who has over 20 years of testing experience with the company. Norbert has published papers on transformer failure statistics, phase shifting transformer testing, and bushing testing. He is currently the secretary for the Dobo Client Transformers Committee. Prior to Dobo, he spent over 15 years with Ebasco Services providing engineer, engineering services necessary to construct nuclear and fossil fuel power plants. Norbert received his BSAA from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts, and is a licensed professional engineer in the state of Massachusetts. Norbert, you have the stage. Thank you, Monty. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. And uh, by the end of this webinar, you should be able to com confidently test the overall insulation of three winding transformers. As you might imagine, a three winding transformer is a little more complicated than a two winding transformer, which many, many on the call here on the webinar may be aware of. But going through the procedures here, you'll see that it's, uh, it's very easy to do and DTA helps and Stobel Test Assistant helps with the procedures. So let me continue. The uh, presentation will follow this outline. There'll be an overview of the power factor and capacitor testing. Uh, there'll be uh, a section on apparatus and personnel safety because that's very important to any testing regimen. Um, at the transformer dielectric circuit for the three winding transformer will be uh, explained. And then there will be overall test procedures given for both the M4100 and the M7100, which are the, the two most premier global testing equipment uh, now available. Um, there will also be a section on power factor temperature correction factors. Um, then we'll go into how the test results are analyzed in the recommendations. Uh, various winding configurations will give some unusual results, which will be explained, and then a summary will be given on the whole presentation. So overall transformer insulation power factor and capacitance tests. Now why do we do these tests? Um, we're testing the overall insulation of the transformer. And what we're trying to do is assess the condition of that insulation. Now we found that during these power factor tests that the dielectric losses and the percentage of power factor are related to the wetness or the dryness of the insulation, 
if there's any contamination or deterioration of that insulation. So this test, you know, over time you can identify if your insulation is becoming contaminated or deteriorated. So it's a very important test to perform. And results of the overall power factor test can reflect the condition of the windings, the barriers, tap changers, bushings, and oil. And I'll go into some detail further on and explain how these are identified. One significant uh, thing that we found also is that the capacitance of these overall tests, if it uh, indicates the physical uh, orientation of the windings, and it can easily detect movement of the coils or the windings. Um, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen here that there is a winding that's been, uh, been an inward buckling that uh, was identified by the overall test. Now we want to make sure that during any testing that you are safe, so I'm going to go over a few uh, safety concerns. Um, now I show the M4100 and the M7. Uh, the M4100 is at the top, and here's our newest version of test equipment, the M7100. And the testing, uh, the safety procedures during testing are very, very similar, so I'm kind of putting them together. Uh, we want to make sure to first isolate and ground the apparatus under test. And um, so you want to make sure that, of course, the Connections to that apparatus are grounded before you remove them and to work between visible grounds. That, that promotes a safe environment for testing. You want to make sure the instrument um, is grounded. Um, you want to inspect the test leads to make sure that there's uh, no uh, issues uh, with the test leads. And connect the test leads to the instrument first and then put them up on top of the apparatus um, before you uh, to run the test. Now make sure you have good communication while testing. Uh, so in other words, like coming hot or all clear, whatever is good for your particular crew, and make sure everybody understands what the what the meaning of each one of the statements is. Now you should never come in contact with the test lead while uh, testing, and the personnel are not allowed on the apparatus while there is test voltage, right? and do not bypass or defeat any of the safety features. Now just for example, on the lower right hand of the screen, we show a, um, a safety switch, right? Um, this also can be called an enabling switch in that, in that this switch must be depressed uh, to the first position for the test to be able to be performed. Uh, in this particular model, if you press it too hard, it will also uh, uh, go off and it will interrupt the test. And this is so that uh, anyone that maybe will get into the uh, test voltage will tense up and shut the test set off. This is an added test feature um, that is available for both the M4100 and the M7100. Once the testing is complete, remove the leads from the specimen first. So uh, if there's any situation where you don't need a lead, you should remove it from the transformer, from the top of the transformer, put it down on the ground, and then disconnect it from the test set. And the ground lead should be the last one to be removed. I didn't point this out before, but this is a picture of the ground lead, and this is the connection for the, uh, for the ground in the uh, M4100. And then along this is a, another receptacle for the ground lead uh, for the M7100. So now let's look at the transformer dielectric circuit. In this particular case, we want to look at the three winding transformer. Um, now, of course, there are three different windings, um, the high voltage, the low voltage, and the tertiary. Now, from each one of those windings to ground, now that can be the grounded tank and grounded core, Anything that's grounded inside of the tank is what is going to be referenced during the test. So all the insulation from the high voltage winding to ground, we will identify as CH. We used to call it CHG, but we dropped the G because it's just, it's just understood. The low to ground, of course, is called CL. And between the uh, 
tertiary and ground is CT. Now also we have three other insulation systems that are between the windings. I'll point this out here. Between high and low is the CHL. Between the low and tertiary is CLT. And between the high and tertiary is CHT. So those are the six insulation systems that we will be testing uh, during this uh, uh, during the testing of a three winding transformer. Now it's also very good to get a very good feeling of what is inside the tank while you're doing the tests so that you can identify if there's an issue anywhere uh, in your testing. So uh, <coughs> the insulation between the winding conductors and the grounded tank and core are, are included here. Now you can have the winding insulation that is just around the, the windings, the low tertiary and high voltage bushings. Now this is the uh, turret for the high voltage. But notice the bushings are not installed, but they would be included uh, in the test during, uh, during the overall test. Structural insulating members. Now this is something that people don't uh, often think about, but these structural members are energized during the test. You know, uh, um, it makes a difference which winding, of course, you're energized. In this case, the high voltage winding is here. Any path to ground is stressed. If they were tracking along that insulating member, it could be identified with the test. Now, this is a good picture, and then it shows the de-energized tap changers right here. Now, uh, that's the DETC. Now, as the name implies, the transformer must be de-energized to move this tap changer. And the overall test tests the insulation from these devices to ground. Right? Each one of these will be energized and tested to ground during the high voltage uh, test, usually. Uh, that's where the DET is usually located, it's in the high voltage uh, winding. Now, the load, the load tap changer is shown here. And these, of course, are energized when the low voltage winding is uh, energized and they will be stressed um, during that time. And then, of course, insulating liquid, of course, or fluid is, surrounds this, and that will be also stressed during the ground insulation test. Now, the inner winding test is uh, a little different in that you get the insulation that's between the high and low and tertiary windings. Um, it could be the winding insulation. Now, this is the insulation right here that we're talking about. The insulation barriers, like this is the uh, um, part of the barriers. Um, the spacing blocks are these right here. The craft paper tubes are these large cylinders here and here, and the insulating liquid. Notice there are no bushings, no low tap changer in this because those are not part of those tests of insulation. So it's good to under, be able to know what is in the test that you are doing. All right, now uh, DTA, or Doable Test Assistant, is used to make sure that we get consistent test results. And uh, this is the form that we, are, that we use. And uh, the thing that's nice about a three-winding transformer test procedure is we, it's actually three two-winding transformers that we do in series. The first one contains the high and the low voltage winding. The second one is the low and the tertiary, and the third one is the tertiary and high. And I'll go through this in a little more detail so you can understand. So here is the three winding transformer test procedure for the M4100 users. Uh, remember, test voltage, we want to make sure that we use the proper test voltages. Um, these are uh, published in our, in our books and in DTA, so uh, um, but the main thing to remember is if your winding is rated greater than 12 kV, you can test at 10 kV. Any other lower voltages you want to look it up. Uh, so, test procedure. Now, uh, one thing we want to make sure that you do is to short the windings, because not shorting the windings can cause, cause some unusual test results. So we short the high side, we short the low side, and short the tertiary. And then the... Uh, Inside DTA, we indicate where the high voltage, the red, and the low uh, blue low voltage leads are connected. And notice the high is on the uh, the high voltage winding is here, 
The red is on the low and blue is on tertiary. And this is the first two winding transformer that we're going to test. So uh, here is the first two winding transformer. We're energizing the high and we're measuring both low and ground. We get CH plus CHL. That's test number one. Then we go to test number two where we measure only CH. Then we go to test number three. Um, we get test CHL. Now notice this is all automatically done by the test set. You just have to make the right connections. Then we rotate the leads and this is uh, uh, quite easy in that whatever lead is on the high side you will move to the low. Whatever's here you move to the tertiary and whatever's in the tertiary you move to the high. So now the high voltage lead will be on the low voltage winding. The red will have the tertiary and the blue will be on the high side. And again, it's written up in DTA, the connections. The shorting of the bushings remains the same. Now we're energizing this, the low voltage winding, so we're measuring this to winding transformer. Right? And then, of course, we uh, go to test number six, where we measure only the low voltage winding to ground. Then we uh, change it to the second, uh, the seventh test, and notice that we now go from the low to tertiary. Okay, so we've got the second two winding transformer completed. Now the third uh, test setup, or the third transformer, is between the high and the tertiary uh, windings. We've rotated the leads again. We take whatever is on this lead, uh, on this connection, and move it here. Then we take the red lead that was here and move it up to here. We take the blue lead and move it over to here. Again, if you forget the procedure, you can look at the connections in DTA. The shorting of short circuiting of the bushings remains the same, of course. Now, in this third uh, two winding transformer, we now are energizing the tertiary and the CHT and the CT are being measured. That's test number nine. Uh, notice that CT goes to ground and the CHT is grounded by the low voltage lead, so you measure both. Uh, one thing I want to point out here is the low voltage winding in every one of these tests is guarded away. So, it, so that low voltage winding like disappears to the test. Then we uh, automatically go to test number 10 with the software, right? And we get CT. We get the CT insulation only. Notice if you follow the circuit, you'll only measure what's going through the ground lead. Remember, the ground lead is a measurement lead. It should be connected right on the tank, okay? Um, now, uh, any other insulation is guarded away. Notice it's guarded away and is not measured. Now the uh, test number 11, we measure the inner winding insulation between the tertiary and high, and notice that um, we, do, we only measure that one circuit. Everything else is guarded. Uh, one thing I should note, be very careful when you move to the tertiary and you're energizing the tertiary, because it may have a, a, a much lower voltage rating than the high and the low voltage windings. Uh, if it's 4160, you do not want to put 10 kV on it. You want to put 2 kV only. Now, the uh, test procedure for line 13 is, the, is what we call the check test. Um, of course, you've already got jumpers here, here, and here. But what we want you to do is include additional jumpers here and here. And that makes it so every bushing is going to be energized at the same time, and we'll measure all of the insulations to ground. The insulation of CH, CL, and CT will be measured. Notice you do not need any low voltage leads for this test. All the insulation uh, is, uh, all the current is going to be coming back through the through the ground lead. Um, remember to drop the low voltage lead to the ground and then disconnect them from the uh, test set. 
Uh, and here is the test right here. You're measuring CH, CL, and CT in parallel, so you're measuring all those insulations. Now, for M7100 users, the procedure is a, a little quicker. You have less trips up and down the ladder. Now, remember, while we were doing those tests, while we were applying the voltage, no one could be up on top of the transformer. M7100 users don't have to do as many trips, and so let me show you that. Um, for 10 tests, we uh, short the windings as usual, and then for that one test, we short every one of them. Just That's very similar to the M4100. But what makes it a little different is we have two high voltage lead with the M7100. We have an HV1 and an HV2. And both these leads can apply voltage or so, uh, as a source, or it can be grounded, or it can be guarded, or it can be measured. So it's got four different functions for each one of the high voltage leads. Now the, uh, the M3 lead is only a measurement lead, um, and, or a ground lead, or it can be grounded. Um, but it is uh, cannot supply any voltage. And then, of course, the MG is a little different identification for the ground lead. So the test procedure is very similar, but now we notice we have an HV1 and an HV2 in the M3 lead. Uh, for test number one, we energize the high voltage. Right? The test set does all the connections necessary to get that energized, and then this is grounded, of course, and then this is grounded through the test set. Then test number two, we only measure CH, and then test number three, we measure only CHL. Notice that that high voltage lead two is actually a measurement lead now. Then we do not have to change the leads connections. So in other words, you don't have to go back up on the transformer to do desks five, six, and seven. And that's done this way. So you energize the H2, the two lead, and these two insulation systems are energized, and you will measure those. And then uh, the test set continues on with its multiple tests. Number six, it only measures the CL. Right? And notice that the CLT is not being measured. And then the last one, the CLT is measured, you energize here, and you measure the, the tertiary. All right, now you do have to move the leads um, for tests 9 through 11. And what you do is you switch these two leads. The HV1 stays right where it is. Only the uh, HV2 and the M3 leads change. Uh, now, notice that Oops, excuse me, notice that these two have switched. So now, um, we now energize the HV2, and we get these two insulation systems. This one, of course, is being measured, and this, of course, the ground is being measured. So we get the, the, uh, the lumped system of CT plus CHT. Then we do the CT. And then the test set automatically goes to the CHD. Now, uh, also for test number 13, of course, we have to go back up on top of the unit again um, to sh put the shorting jumpers on to uh, connect the HV, because the HV1 is already here. But we have to take the HV2 down, the M3 cable down, and then disconnect it from the M7100. After we have this set up, of course, we are doing these tests here. We're energizing all of the windings at once. Be careful with the voltage again. And we'll measure CH plus CL plus CT. Uh, so these are the measured results that we just went through. One through three are for the first two winding transformer. Five, six, and seven are for the second two winding transformer. Nine, 10, and 11 are for the, test for the third one. And then the overall test where we're testing all the installations to ground is number 13. Now we also have some calculated value. That's, that's why we're skipping around a little bit in that um, this 4, 8, and 12 are calculated values, right? 
And they are obtained by taking this value and subtracting this value to get this value. And CH plus CHL minus CH, of course, would be CHL. So this is a calculated CHL. And as you might expect, the measured CHL and the calculated CHL should be very, very close. And let's look at that three parts in 45,000. So it, it's exactly the same as far as I'm concerned. And then, of course, the watts are done the same way. You subtract these two to get this value. And as, as I explained before, they should match up fairly closely. Now, there's also a calculation for this 0.27 here. That's uh, 10 times the watts divided by the current to get this value. And then the capacitance is done the same way. This minus this equals that, and these two are very, very close. And the line number 8 and line number 12 are calculated in the same way. And notice, you can notice very quickly that they match up very nicely. You know, they uh, um, look at that, within one part in like over 124,000 parts, so they match up very closely. And then the overall test number 13, is, as we call it, is a check test. We take and add these three capacitances together. And in this particular case, it's that number right there. And then we compare it with the number that we measured. And notice this is very, very close. It's, uh, what, about 40, 40 parts and 14,000. And uh, if it's too far away, um, we'll flag it that something might have been done, might have been, been done wrong in those, is one of these four tests, or some of those four tests. Now the uh, power factor is corrected for temperature um, related to, of course, the temperature of the apparatus and the kind of preservation system that the transformer has. And I'm going to explain how that works. Um, here is the correction factor for an example uh, test, and it's 0.92. Now, where does that number come from? Well, um, previous to the uh, DTA software, we used to uh, publish these, um, uh, this chart or this table uh, in paper form. And I've just put it in this presentation so you can see the, the, uh, where it came from historically and how it's used in DTA. Now, as I mentioned, it, the weather conditions for the particular test that I just showed you, that the apparatus temperature was, this, this is the top oil temperature, was 35 degrees C. So that on the chart is right there. Here's the C, 35 degrees. Now, it doesn't make a difference what the air temperature is. It's the apparatus temperature we want, because the air temperature doesn't affect the overall temperature test that much. It could actually be below freezing and you still get representative tests. And then, of course, the tank type that was chosen by the, by the person doing the test is a nitrogen blanketed and it's an oil coolant. So that's the oil filled. Uh, it's a power transformer, by the way, and it's gas blanketed and that's how you get that value of 0.92. It's right out of the chart. Okay, now uh, how do we analyze the results? Here we've got some nice numbers and everything, and we want to say, what, what's the value of these? Well, we do what we call tabulations of many, many test results. Now, this is just, uh, you know, uh, a small sampling. We've got thousands and thousands or more in our DTA web. But uh, this is like 240 of the tests for CH in this particular sampling had power factors in the 0.3 range, right? and they had 180 around 0.4. And this is how we identify the, the locations where we're going to put the limits. Um, and notice in this particular case, all these power factors are below 0.5, and we've given them a G rating. Now, what does that G rating mean? Well, it's good condition, acceptable for service until next scheduled test. So in other words, you can now do a routine test in five years, six years, whatever your recommendation is. Deteriorated, not as good as before and retests in a year or less to monitor the insulation condition. You know, what is the trend? Is it, is it getting higher or is it just staying where, where it tested previously? 
Investigate. Test results show a problem. You should um, investigate. Bad. Not suitable for service. Um, keep from uh, keep away from uh, out of service until the condition is clarified, or you may have to replace the specimen. Uh, nameplate data is incomplete and DT is unable to determine. That's when you get a Q rating. Now, uh, to get a little bit more detail, um, uh, a distribution transformer is is uh, zero to 500 kVA, very small unit, and as you might expect, the power factor limits are fairly high on those. But when you get into power transformers uh, greater than 500 kVA and less than 230 kV, we have a more strict limit on the power factor. Remember, a lower power factor is better, right? So anything below 0.5 in, the, uh, in those uh, ratings would be given a good rating. Now, when we get a greater than 230 kV, we even become more strict, where we don't want you to go over 0.4. Uh, to get a good rating. Anything between 0.4 and 0.6 is deteriorated. Anything greater than 0.6 will get an investigate. Now, I had mentioned that the change in capacitance is very, very important. Uh, between 0 and 5%, you'll get a G rating you won't notice. Um, between 5 and 10%, we will get a D rating. Even if all the power factors are good on a particular insulation, if it's between 5 and 10, you will get a D. And if it's greater than 10% change, you'll get an I rating. So uh, let's look at some results with various winding configurations. These are, these are quite interesting. Um, in this particular case, we show that the CHT will have a low current. Now, why is this? Now, uh, during the CHT test, um, you're energized in the tertiary winding and trying to measure to the high voltage winding. Well, notice that the low voltage winding is in the way. And in that particular test, <coughs> the low voltage winding is grounded. So in UST, um, the low voltage winding being grounded, the current going trying to get to the high voltage winding is guarded away. It is not measured. So it almost makes the high voltage winding disappear. You are only getting the skirting effects around the low voltage winding. Of course, it will happen on the bottom also. So you're getting very, very low values. Notice that in this case, this is a case right here where that's the situation. And notice it's less than one milliamp. That's the way we identify that there may be a shielding problem or a shielding situation. I don't want to indicate that this is a problem. It's just the situation. So that's why this is very low. Notice comparison, it's 41 and 21 milliamps for the other insulation system. Now this one um, was given a bad rating because, because uh, it didn't match up nicely and everything. So uh, this was given a bad rating, but we uh, informed the client that this was okay because of the low, low currents. Now this is another situation that we found where the LT will have, the CLT will have a low current. And the reason for this is because this is a stacked winding. Often these two windings will have the same rating, you know, 4160 volt. Uh, it's a uh, aux auxiliary transformer at a power station. And the reason this has got a low current is because the capacitance is very low here. The area between these two windings is very small compared to between high and tertiary and high and low. Here's an example of that. Uh, again, under one milliamp, but and notice that um, it's very consistent though, so there's really no problem, but it's a lot lower than the other currents. Notice also that these currents here and here are very similar because those areas are very, very similar. So this, again, is not indicating a problem. It's indicating a particular construction of the transformer. Uh, the last case I wanted to show is the, the winding configuration actually caused a negative power factor. Notice how low these currents are. This is like 1 100th of what the limit we usually say is around. 1, one milliamp is where we'd say oh, that's very So um, the, the uh, engineer that um, 
was asked about this case, went to the manufacturer and said, how is this transformer built? Why are we getting these results? And this is what they had identified to him, is that the low voltage winding is in, on one leg of this single phase transformer, <coughs> while the tertiary winding is on the other leg, and the high voltage winding is actually split between, two, between the two legs. When uh, the test in question number seven, the CLT test, we are energizing the low voltage winding and trying to get to the tertiary. Notice again that the high voltage winding in this case is guarding the two. So that's one reason you're getting a low current. Well, the other reason is look at the distance. Um, the uh, current will go down because of the increased distance between two windings. So there's two reasons why this current is very, very low. There's the shielding effect and also the distance. In summary, um, the power factor test assesses the condition of the installation quality. Uh, the, those list of four things in there can uh, tell you, um, uh, can it uh, cause higher power factors and indicate a problem. Um, now the capacitance tests are a measure of the structural integrity of the transformer. Um, when you compare to a previous test and the capacitance has changed significantly, we usually say significant is over five or definitely over 10% shows a structural integrity issue and it could indicate that winding has moved. Now the test procedure breaks up the apparatus into several insulation systems. What we mean by that is that we, uh, let's say for, for test one, two, and three, we have CH plus CHL, and then we break it up so that we measure CH separately and then CHL separately. So each one of the smaller insulations are tested. And a key point to remember is testing a three-winding transformer is the equivalent of testing three two-winding transformers. Remember, the procedure is all in DTA, so it's difficult to do it incorrectly. Uh, you want to trend results over time. So in other words, pay attention to changes from one testing year to another. Also, certain winding configuration can result in low measured currents and high, low, or even negative power factors, but don't indicate an issue. And some key points to remember is that for testing service providers, um, definitely save the electronic results and print a hard copy and provide that electronic copy and hard copy to the owner of the apparatus. For apparatus owners using the test and service providers, refer to the printout to assess the condition of the insulation and make sure to request the electronic copy so that you have it uh, available. And that electronic file can be used using DTA and it can also be used for repeat tests so that for the next service provider. And also, of course, if you want to test it yourself, of course, you can use that DTA um, for the owner to test it. And uh, that uh, completes my presentation. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Norbert, for today's informative webinar. We do have a few questions here, so I'll get started. First question. Uh, for tests five, six, and seven, you don't, it says you don't move the two high voltage leads, but do you have to change the connection to the test set? Uh, the answer is no. You do not have to change the connections at the test set. Um, the test set uh, has the ability to make the necessary connections in the box. So, uh, um, so what you can do is you can actually run tests one through three, get those tests completed, then you can choose tests five, six, and seven and run those tests without any lead changes at all. Okay, very good, thank you. So next one says, here, um, Says you have all the capacitors in the measuring circuit on your on your diagrams. Um, 
how do you get the capacitor value between between the two windings separate from the phase to ground value in the device? Um, you know, I didn't understand the question, Monty. Could you see? So it says, uh, in looking at the diagrams, you have all the capacitors showing in the measuring circuit. Um, how do you get the capacitor value between the two windings separate from the phase to ground value in the uh, uh, device? Yeah. yeah, I think I think I understand. I'm just going to go to one one example. Yeah, let's just look at this example here. Um, you know, in the three winding transformer, you of course have all the insulation is there. It's just how we apply the voltage and how we measure will determine which capacitor we're going to be measuring. So let me just point this out. Um, in this particular case, we're going to energize the HV1 lead, and the high voltage winding will be energized. In this particular case, test number one, both of these windings, uh, excuse me, uh, insulations, right, will be tested. Let me show you how that works. The CHL, you follow the current down through CHL, and that goes through the measuring network and will be measured. The current going through CH will go down through and go through the ground lead and be measured. So in other words, it's how the test set connects the leads to the measuring network. Um, I'm going to go one, go through two more slides. Um, notice again, we're still energizing HV1 for test number two. We go follow, we follow down through this circuit, and notice we measure. Notice that anything going this way is guarded, is not measured. See how it did not go through the measuring network? And then um, I'm going to show this one also. Notice it does not go through the measuring network. And lastly, when I energize this and go down through this capacitor, notice I measure that one. Any current going to ground is not measured. See how the current through that circuit does not go through the measuring network. And lastly, if you go follow, if you follow down through this insulation, notice that is also guarded. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Very good, thank you, Norbert. Uh, next question, do three winding transformers have a neutral link? If so, do you need to disconnect it before testing? A neutral link, in other words, a neutral ground? Uh, I think that might be, okay, okay let me just explain what I think he means. Um, if there is a uh, ground for any one of the bushings, that must be must be removed. Uh, now, one other situation that he might be considering is when you have two um, Y connected windings. Sometimes there is a link between the two um, at the at the neutral point, and that would have to be disconnected to be able to test those two windings separately. Um, if you can get to cannot get to the link then you are uh, forced to test that as one winding. I think that's what he probably was questioning. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, what is the purpose of the tertiary winding? Ah, okay. Tertiary winding, uh, um, now, uh, Doble is not an, uh, um, not an operations type uh, company. We're more of a testing company, of course. But, uh, but the tertiary, from my understanding, is usually uh, to provide either an additional voltage, like in a in the uh, uh, in a uh, power plant, um, you can often have two voltages sent into the power plant to uh, to run auxiliary uh, equipment, two separate circuits, right? So that's why you'd have a low and a tertiary winding. In another situation. <coughs> You uh, may use that tertiary winding for substation power, where the high and the low are the main circuits, but the tertiary is for uh, is for some substation um, uh, power for us.
auxiliary power. Uh, now, the tertiary in a three-winding transformer shouldn't be confused with a tertiary for an auto transformer. A tertiary on an auto transformer is used to make sure that like zero sequence currents and stuff are taken care of. Uh, you know, but in a three-winding transformer, it's a little different situation. That is not there for stabilizing. It's more for operational reasons. Very good, thank you. Uh, next question uh, is: Power factor an applicable, applicable test for current transformers? Uh, yes. Of course, that wasn't explained in this uh, in this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, but yes, uh, we do uh, we do recommend CT testing uh, as uh, power factor testing for CTs. Um, the the test for a CT uh, is very very simple. Um, you short the H1 and H2, perform a test to ground at the uh, highest voltage that is applicable for that CT, and, and then we like to have it tested at a lower voltage also. Uh, let's say that you can run the first test at 10 kV, then you'd run a 2 kV test, and then you look to see if there's uh, what we call a tip-up. Um, uh, usually those two tests should get about the same power factor. Uh, a tip-up might indicate a problem. Thank good, you. Good questions. Uh, what is the significance of negative uh, power factor? Uh, okay. Um, in that particular example I gave, um, the, uh, the negative is likely due to it being a very low current, first of all, and also um, we find that during a UST test, which is this is definitely a UST test, right? It's an ungrounded specimen. Let me uh, let me go to that, that slide. Yeah, it's more than likely this one here that gave the uh, gave the low current. Notice that you're energizing this, and you're uh, oops, excuse me, energizing the yellow one. I'm sorry, and measuring this one. So it's a un, what we call an ungrounded specimen. Well, if you have uh, in a low current situation like you have here, any path to ground has a tendency to make the measurement that you're measuring going go negative. It's just a uh, it's the physical situation that you have with the transformer. It will make the test go negative or make it go lower. Than it actually is. We we find this quite common um, on in, uh, un, ungrounded specimen tests where you have a high resistance path to ground. Um, there's been uh, probably three or four papers written on this. I would suggest go to the portal and uh, and read those because they're uh, they're quite uh, quite interesting in how that uh, that phenomenon of a negative power factor is quite common in testing. Very good. Uh, next question, Norbert. How would the bushing influence the UST current when testing between the high side and low side winding? Uh, very good question. Very good question. Um, I, I pointed out, and it maybe was not very clear when you first saw it, um, is notice that in the insulation, oh, I went the wrong way. Um, in the insulation circuit, there are no bushings listed during the interwinding tests, and that's because they are not included. Yeah, it's going to take too long to get there. Is that when I'm energizing the high voltage winding and I'm going to the low voltage winding, of course, I have uh, it's done as a UST test, right? Well, anything that is grounded during a UST test is not measured. So the bushings are not tested during the ungrounded specimen test. Yeah, here it is right here. Notice that in this list, for any of the interwinding insulations, there are no bushings tested. And that's because when you go from the bushing center conductor to ground, that is being guarded away. So the bushing, in effect, disappears during the interwinding test. Okay. 
Next. Very good. All right. Uh, next question. Is there any residual energy that needs to be dissipated between tests? Ah, uh, good question, good question. Yeah, we've uh, um, made sure that the design of the test set is such that it fully discharges um, after, after a test has been completed. Now, with the M7100, we also have a, a additional warning that if for some reason the test gets uh, interrupted and wasn't completed, that we we put a message up there to say that there may be residual energy in the circuit. In that case, I would recommend that you definitely uh, ground out that circuit uh, prior to touching it, just in case. Uh, but if it's if it goes through the process properly and finishes the test, there should be no residual. Now, one thing I want to point out. Uh, another safety feature is that, remember, the test set only provides the test voltages, but there are other sources of voltages in a substation. There could be static um, charges and induced charges. So if there is any conductor in the substation, including the transformer, that is ungrounded, it must be suspected to have charge on it. So be very careful operating, you know, uh, uh, making connections to a transformer. Uh, even though it isn't connected to the outside world, it may still have picked up some charge. So uh, do it safely with uh, uh, proper techniques. Thank you. Should we still be performing DC insulation resistance tests on these transformers in addition to power factor testing? Uh, what would you what would your test voltage be for a 345 kV transformer? Uh, now you're talking about well, of course you, you can't ask the question. Okay, um, for um, okay for insulation resistance testing, um, the recommendations that Doble would make would be that they can be performed. Um, they may f uh, find a problem that the AC test might not. Now, I'm, I'm identifying that is because this is normally a DC test or can be a DC test, right? And it may um, energize a different, the insulation differently. Uh, but if the if that in, winding insulation test is an AC test, more than likely it's going to show this the same things. Uh, one thing that uh, um, I want to be very clear is that insulation resistant tests done with a DC test, uh, even the manufacturer of that equipment usually says that uh, a PI uh, for that type of insulation is not going to show any significant um, uh, issue. Uh, even if there's something wrong with the insulation, the PI test will probably not identify it. Uh, but that's something that you need to look in the instruction manual for, for the insulation resistant test very carefully to see their recommendations. Uh, remember this, um, I'm, a, I'm a Doble employee, I make, I make recommendations on, on Doble tests, so be careful with the winding resistance. Now, now uh, now that I'm uh, uh, now that I've said that, of course, uh, the M7100 kind of kind of uh, blurs that line a little bit because now we are doing uh, insulation resistance tests with the M7100, so we're going to be learning more how we can analyze those results better. Uh, next, okay. Um. Uh, what happens if we have a buried tertiary? Uh, okay, uh, a buried tertiary means that no bushings are brought out of the transformer uh, for connection. Uh, in that case, um, it would be tested as a two-winding transformer. Uh, you have to have the ability to connect to the winding for it to be a viable test point. 
right? So uh, a three-winding transformer with only only bushings from the low and the uh, uh, high voltage could only be tested as a two-winding transformer. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure if this is applicable, but I'll, I'll do it anyways. How do you do an excitation current test for a transformer that is a uh, too close of a ratio, meaning the high side voltage and low side voltages are almost equal. Um, you did say exciting current? Yes. Excitation yeah. current. Oh. Yeah. The excitation current uh, can be done on any transformer uh, no matter what the winding ratio is. Uh, that That's not a significant issue um, with running an exciting current test. Uh, the important thing is that both low and tertiary windings have to be isolated, of course, from ground and also not short-circuited. Um, uh, and when uh, when you run the test, uh, the excit excitation current test, it'll be from the high side. And uh, the ratio between those windings or the voltage ratings of those windings should not make a difference. I'm running those tests. Okay, thank you. So if there is any leakage in the transformer tank at the top, can we perform power factor testing or it's not recommended until the problem is fixed? Um, I know you can't uh, answer the question, but uh, but. It, my question would be, when you say leakage at the top, do you mean a, a nitrogen blanket leak? Uh, I think is what he's probably saying, so I'm going to answer the question that way. Um, uh, a leak in the transformer, of course, that allows oil or uh, nitrogen out uh, during, its, during its lifetime will allow also allow moisture to go into the transformer. Now. Uh, the power factor test is a great way to identify if indeed that may have happened, right? Because moisture will make the power factor go higher. So um, now, it, so in other words, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh, you can, uh, uh, a leak in the transformer is not a reason not to do the test. Test can definitely be performed. Now, um, but if you really feel that the uh, the, the transformer is wet. Let's say you've already done uh, some oil quality tests. You know it's wet. You you uh, you might want to dry it out even before you do the test. But also, you could do the test ahead of time, perform your dry out procedure, right? Fix your leak, and then test again to see how well your dry out procedure was. Uh, remember. Uh, Make sure that you put the oil back in prior to doing the test again, unless you uh, are very careful to purge the uh, unit of uh, oxygen. Okay, and last question. Um, during a test, we found that the conductor from the core clamp, core slash clamp, from the inside of the winding structure to the core clamp bushing compartment on the top of the transformer tank was defective, meaning the insulation for the conductor was defective. While performing power factor, would this issue be detected? Uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. Well, okay. If there's still a electrical connection between that um, ground bushing, the, the core ground bushing, and the core is still electrical connection, it will, um, it will still test probably about the same as it would have with a good connection. Now, if that connection is not there, it's definitely disconnected, you will see a very large difference in the capacitance. We have seen this uh, previously is that people have uh, forgotten to... Uh, uh, reconnect the uh, core ground external to the transformer and perform the test, and you will get quite different capacitances uh, for all the tests. 
Uh, well, the UST test will be about the same, but the, the GST test or the ground test will be quite different uh, due to that change in the core ground configuration. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm a little unsure of the question. I think he's saying that if it's just a, a bad connection with that show, I haven't had experience with that, but I'm kind of wondering if you might get a little higher losses during some of the ground tests. But I haven't got experience with that, um, uh, if, if that would definitely be the case. But I'm thinking that that poor core ground uh, connection having a high resistance might show up in higher losses and higher power factor in some of your ground tests. Uh, and then just to clarify one more thing, is if your core ground is not made, you will definitely see a large capacitance change. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, thank you, Norbert. We, uh, we have others, but we're gonna have to uh, move on and we'll uh, address those questions separately to the recipient who asked them. So thanks very much. Uh, before we wrap up, I'd like to mention that Double hosts technical webinars each month on apparatus field testing and maintenance. Our next webinar will be Wednesday, August 7th at 1 o'clock p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And the subject will be Field Diagnostics for Surge Arresters, presented by Bob Sarney, Principal Client Service Engineer at Doval Engineering. You can sign up using the link shown on our website. Doval will be hosting a client field seminar in Orlando, Florida during August 27th to 28th. This is a valuable opportunity for supplemental training on apparatus testing with technical presentations similar to our webinars, along with many case studies. Registration, venue, and information on the seminar is available at the Doble Events link on our website. The seminar is free of charge for Doble clients. A fee of $395 is charged if you are not a Doble client. Again, the link to view the recording of today's webinar will be sent to all registered attendees in a few days. The link will expire by July 29th. If you are a Doble client, you are entitled to view our, record our recording today along with past webinars at any time on demand by logging into the Doble portal and clicking on the link for Doble webinars. If you would like to get continuing education units or earn one professional development hour, please answer the question related to our webinar today in the feedback form, which will be sent to you at the end of the webinar. A certificate for credit will be sent within four weeks to those who complete the question. In closing, Norbert and I would like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar on testing three winding transformers. If you have any further questions on today's topic, please contact Norbert directly at his email address, which is ngilbert at double.com, or you may contact your Doble client service engineer or use the contact us link on the home page of our website. Again, our presenter today was Norbert Gilbert at Global Engineering. My name is Monty Shigi, and I hope the web webinar provided you with useful and valuable information. Please look for future monthly webinars on the Global website. Thank you for joining us, and have a great rest of the day.